Welcome to this video series about creating a social media activity feed. In addition to full-blown social networks, there are a lot of instances where having an activity feed of some kind in your app is going to be great for your users. So in this video, you're going to learn three things. One, the data side of it. Two, the UI layout. And then three, the functionality of what a basic social media feed has. Specifically, in this video, we're going to focus on liking and commenting, sharing, that is a little bit more messaging, and then bookmarking. That's actually the same as a favorites feature that's built in 14 or video 14 of the yoga app that's on this channel. So check that one out. And then we'll wrap it up with the ability to, you know, post comments, preview them, and a timestamp of when the post was posted. So, uh, Let's get started by adding some data to our database. You can see kind of where we're headed with this. So over here in our data, what I'm working with is basically a completely blank out of the box uh, bubble data setup. And we're gonna create a type post. We're gonna create a type comment and we already have users to do that over in post. Now I know I'm going all the way from scratch because a lot of folks who visit this channel uh, might be new to bubble. So what we're going to have for our post, it's going to have some content and that will be type text. It's going to have an image. It could have a video. Uh, I'll note when we are building the UI that, uh, you know, you would just use a different element for a video instead of an image. And uh, let's see, it's going to have a list of likers, people that have liked it. That's going to be a list of users. So make sure that that is checked. And then we created comments here. So we're gonna have a list of comments that are tied to the post and that's gonna be of type comment. And it's a list, uh, rather than counting up like an integer of all the likes, we're just gonna use uh, the, the users who have liked it. That way we can look if somebody has already liked it, if they're in this list, then you know it's gonna be uh, you know filled in. And then that way when they click it again, we already know that that person is clicking it. We can use that conditional to you know unlike it as it were. So. Uh, let's move on and add some posts and users to our app. Let's start with the users. I have a, another app over here. We're just going to keep this super lightweight. Oh yeah, for our users, before I forget, let's add just two fields for them. One, we're going to have a username and that'll just be type text. And then two, profile photo, that'll be of type image. So I'm just going to go really lightweight and add in these users, again, doing this all from scratch so you have an idea of really exactly where uh, everything is coming from. And for the users, I've actually already uh, gotten them from this place called, oh, where did I get them from? Just if anyone is curious, it is randomuser.me. There is a place where you can go and get uh, sample user data that you can use in your apps. It's fantastic. And then so we've got this successful entry and we'll just go ahead and fill this all in. Cool. So with that set up, now let's go and add some posts here. What I want to do though, is I actually want to run this as one of my users. So that way, and rather than adding a post here in the back end, we want the then because if we did that, the post creator would actually be the app admin and we want that post creator to be a user. So the way that I'm going to go about this, is I'm going to add a button here. Oh yeah. And just to give a little preview of the page setup. We're working in a column, uh, container layout, and we're looking at a 320 by 700 canvas to start out with. And we'll just say, this is a add post button. And, uh, this is going to go away in a second, but we're just going to use it to quickly add some stuff to the posts for the database. Well, I'm going to do this. I just like to use a little pop-up and in this pop-up, what we'll have is a picture uploader and then we'll have an input and a button. And we'll just know that this is the, is the picture that's going into the post. This one here is going to be the content. So for example, uh, no, this one doesn't even have any content. So, um, but you know what, you know, what's up. You've seen a million of these, right? Uh, okay. So next up, so let's see, create post. 
So when this is created, or when this is clicked, what I want to have happen is I want to create a new thing. We're going to create a post and we're going to give it the image is going to be this picture uploader A's value and then the content will be the multi-line or input A rather's value. Okay. And uh, again, note here that we could be using a, instead of an image, uh, we could be using a video and having that come from rather than a um, an image uploader for our inputs here, we would use a file uploader for uh, for videos and then store that as a file. So I want to also take this and when this is clicked, I'll show my little pop up here. And then we, we have this nice and I'll hide this. And go and I'll also reset inputs. Here. Cool. So let's go out and do this. And one trick if you are working in Chrome, which uh, I suggest you do when you're working in Bubble, uh, because you can do this, especially if you're working on mobile, and which is a lot of what I like to do. Uh, right out of the gate, you might not have these settings clicked, so click this here on the left. You can see this little uh, device toggle, and then this little uh, three dot uh, menu will expand, and you can undock this and remove that, so you get this nice view of things. So cool. All right, so let's go and add a post, and then I'm just going to go, and I've got some sample posts down here, and then I'm going to open up a lorem ipsum generator site. And drop some content in there. Okay. Oh, it looks like I forgot to hide it, but that's okay. So we'll add another one. Oh, actually, before we do this, we're going to change the user. So here in our database, that way we have, and you can see here's our post, and that the creator is this person Mads Christensen. And then now I'm gonna run this as Virginia. And I'm just gonna refresh this because they're working in the same browser. So now we're logged in as that user. I'm gonna grab another post, type in the lorem ipsum, and then we'll do one more user. So that way we have this nice um, social media feed. Cool. Okay. So now we can get rid of this stuff. And let's move on to actually create the feed. So grab a repeating group, drop that out onto the page. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set this just something pretty large so that we have a some space to be working in. And then for the type of content, we're gonna say post. We're gonna do a search for all the posts. Again, in your world, you would just be looking for the particulars of exactly what it is you wanted to display here. Uh, for more on you know, finding the, correct, uh, the right or correct data sources, go and search this channel for any time. There's a repeating group being filled out. Uh, lots of examples throughout uh, the, the channel. So let's see, for this one, I wanna make it a column because we're gonna have things repeating down it and then we'll just let it do its thing and expand out to be nice and big. Cool. All right, so next up, I'm gonna grab a group and I'm gonna drop that in and I'm gonna call this group shell because I would like to have a nice little uh, border around it. So I'm gonna remove the style here. I'm gonna say borders, give it a roundness of 10, make it a nice light gray, layout. Uh, let's see the appearance. I want to have this as a column as well. Let it expand out and just take up the whole space of everything. Cool. All right. What else? Um, oh, yeah. Let's also at the very bottom of it uh, for a margin between posts. So this is basically when we see things in the repeating group uh, here, then we see this little gap in between, which is what we want to have happen. Okay. So now... Uh, we've got data set up, whoops, and um, 
we'll just start off. We'll we'll go ahead and drop in at the at the end of this video here. We're working on the UI. We'll drop in a little group here, and oh yeah, let's double check though that this group shell it actually has the uh, it's a type post and it has for a data source. Uh, we want this to be inside of the repeating group. There we go. So now what's available to us is this current cells post data. So cool. And then now with this, we're going to call this group header where we can uh, really start making our feed. Uh, let's see, we will allow this thing, we'll make this a row because in this case, things are going uh, across it now. Uh, move my mouse over to try and give the directional sense and uh, we'll let that expand out and I think 54 is, is fine maybe say 50 yeah 54 and then let's see if we drop an image into here wait did we get the data set up yet okay so we so uh, each time you drop a group inside of a group you'll just want to pass the data up so we're working with post and we'll just grab the parent groups post and so we've passed the data up so now we can access it when we type in an image here and we'll make this image well we'll just go ahead and give it the parent groups posts and let's see so we actually want this one to be the creators profile photo so all those photos that we got from that random dot, random dot me site so this is the image profile photo and let's see we'll just yeah give it this nice vertical alignment we'll say 40 and make that aspect ratio fixed we'll give it a roundness of 20 which it needs to be at least half if you're going to get a nice circle effect and then if we mouse over here, we can see there's like eight above it. So let's go with uh, eight as the left side margin as well. So it just kind of has that. We'll drop in a text here and remove the styling on that because we're going to try and just kind of mimic what's going on here. So we got a little bit of a bold thing going. So let's maybe drop this down to like 600 and 16 is pretty large. Set it here, set that uh, horizontally, set this, or I mean vertically, the alignment. Uh, and then we want to maybe knock it off by 10 or so from there. And then we'll get the dynamic data in here and then we'll take a preview at our lovely work so far. Congratulations on making it this far. Uh, oh wait, not the content. It's, let's see, it's post its creator's uh, username. Yep, so now when we refresh, we should see something that, yeah, so we can see that this person had a, a post and this person had a post. And we don't have any other content in our repeating group just yet. Uh, that's going to come up right next after this in the next video.